Um, what we're going to be doing in this particular video is we're going to take a program that we already created. This is the uh, alien encounter robot where we had a, a robot, or an alien encounter program where we had a robot encountering an alien on the moon. And what we'll do is we'll just play it to sort of recap what we've got so far. Okay, do that here. An alien stands up, robot turns around, takes a step towards the robot, turns around, turns red, and Houston, we have a problem. So that's the program we've created so far. And what we want to do is we're going to modify that. We're going to learn a few more things about computer program in our efforts to modify it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to click on the, on the spider robot right here. So I'm going to select that as my object. And what I want to concentrate on are actually the three tabs that are down here. Now, two of these tabs we've already talked about. We've already talked about the properties tab. Okay. And the properties tabs are attributes of that object, things that you can change about that object. Okay. And one of the things we changed in the previous program is we changed the color. Actually, we only changed the color of the spider robot's head, one part of the spider robot, and we changed that color to uh, red to symbolize, uh, symbolize a danger or something like that. So when we're doing that, we're, we're, just, uh, we're changing a property of that robot. The other tab we looked at was the method tab. And methods are things that objects can do. So the spider robot can move, spider robot can turn, spider robots can roll. So these are actions that can happen within. And you can scroll down, and there's all kinds of things. And different objects can do different things. So the methods might change from object to object. OK, so we talked about that. We did a lot of that in the previous, uh, in the, uh, previous program. What I want to concentrate now is actually on this third tab, this functions tab. And what does the functions tab to? Functions, and I'll click on it in a second, let you see some functions in just a little bit, are kind of like methods, but they don't get the object to do something. What they actually do is ask the object a question. Okay, they want some information from the object. And when you ask a question, you expect an answer to return to you. Okay? And all functions are going to return that answer in the form of a value. Now, we tend to think about when we hear the word value as values just being numbers. And a value could be a number. But a value in computer science and programming is just anything, any kind of information that can be passed back and forth. So when I say the word value, I don't want to just think about numbers. It can be anything. And over here, I have um, a little list of the possible values that can come up in Alice. And we'll be working with all of these. Okay. So one of the possible types of values you might see is a number. And a number could be like 5, you could get negatives, you can get decimals, whatever. But these are examples of values. Okay. You could also get returned a Boolean value. A Boolean value is one of two values, and usually we say it could be either true or false. So you've asked a question that has a true or false answer to it. It says yes, that's true, or no, that's false. Or you can think of that as yes or no, but usually we talk true and false. So that's a Boolean value, not a number. The answer could require a string to come back as a value. Okay? Strings are just collections of characters. So here we have the example of hello world. But actually in our program we've already worked with some strings. We have the string slithy toves, including the question mark. Um, we also had the string Houston we have a problem. And strings aren't just the letters. Strings include spaces and punctuation. Strings can also include numbers. Okay? They're just a collection of characters. Basically, anything that you type in your keyboard can be thought of as being part of a string. And then finally, a, um, a, uh, a function could return another object as its answer. Okay? Maybe the question is, what's the object that's closer to you, closest to you, spider robot? And the spider robot might say, this rock is closest to me. And it might return rock as its answer. So it could be another object. Okay? With that in mind, let's take a look at the functions tab. I click on the functions tab and we have a list of functions and I'll leave it for you to scroll down and to look at those and feel free again to play around and see what each of these do. do. Um, but each of these is asking the spider robot a question. So for instance the first one and actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll move this over so you can actually read the whole thing. Okay. Spider robot is within threshold of an object. That's the first one. So what that's saying is, are you within a certain distance of another object? Are you within? You can change these uh, parameters in the in the um, 
or the functions or the sorry the attributes in the function you can change them to other values as well so like for instance you could change threshold to maybe two meters you can change object to rock and you might ask the question is spider robot within two meters of the rock and that's a yes or a no that would be a boolean value that would return be returned back it's either going to return true it is or false it's not and I'll leave it for you to take a look at the other ones but what we're interested in affecting in this particular program is actually this line right here. So when I'm going to scroll down, this spider robot move forward one meter. Okay, that's where we have the spider robot just take one step towards the rock. And what I want to do is I want to actually have the spider robot move right to the rock. That's what I want to do. Now I could play around with that distance and try and figure out. It's kind of hard looking at the picture how far away is the rock and I could try 2 meters and 3 meters and 5 meters and 10 meters and 2.8 meters and whatever it is that makes it. But that, that takes a lot of playing around. It's not a very good way to do it because if all of a sudden in my program I want to move the spider robot or move the rock, suddenly that distance has changed and then I've got to play around with this number again. I don't have to do all that. What I can do is ask the spider robot through the use of a function, how close are you to the rock? And then move that distance. So here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go over here and then the third function down is called distance2. I'm going to take the spider robot distance2 function and I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to replace the one meter with it. And you can see how the box goes green when I got it in, the, in, in a place that I can drag it to. So it's not going to move one meter now, it's going to move a distance2. And distance to what? It's asking me what distance do I want to move. I'm interested in distance to the rock. So I'm going to change the one meter to spider robot distance to rock. So let's take a look at this whole um, this whole line here now. So it's going to say spider robot move forward, but then we encounter this function distance to. So it's going to ask the spider robot, how far are you from the rock? And the spider robot might say, oh, I'm 5.8 meters from the rock. So it's going to move forward 5.8 meters or whatever that distance happens to be. Okay. That sounds a little encouraging. Hopefully that will get the spider robot to do what we want. So I'm going to click the play button. And what I want to pay close attention to is what the spider robot does when it moves towards the rock. And there it goes. And it, that was a little bit disappointing. Okay, You might have been expecting that. You might not have been expecting that. But let's take a closer look at what's going on here. It, the spider robot actually moved right into the rock. So that the rock and the spider robot kind of merged together. And that... that um, isn't very satisfactory. It kind of broke the illusion of this being a physical o uh, objects because, you know, real life objects don't move into each other like that. So what happened here? Well, we actually talked about this in the previous video. When you're measuring distance and moving things around, the program is only taking a look at the centers of the objects. That's what it's measuring distances to and from. So when you ask spider robot distance to rock, it's measuring the distance from the center of the spider robot to the center of the rock. And then it moves that distance, so it's going to end up moving the center of the spider robot to wherever the, dis the center of the rock is, and with the center of the spider robot right on top of the center of the rock, the two objects are now mushed together. Well, that's not particularly satisfying. I don't like that. So let's see how we can modify this a little bit. So I'm going to close this and take a look at this line. I like using the function, the distance to function, Okay, I don't want to abandon that, but I need to modify it. I need to subtract off a distance is what I need to do. Right? Uh, it's moving too far. Well, there's always more you can do with the function, and you're going to get more by hitting this second little down arrow right here. Not this down arrow. This down arrow is for if I want to change the rock to something else, but this one allows me to add more things to the function. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, I'm going to scroll over to here, and what I want to do is I want to do some math. Okay? And I'm going to take the function that I have, the spider robot distance to rock, and I'm going to subtract a number from it. And this is going to take a little bit of playing around, so I'm going to start off with just subtracting 1 from it. Okay? And it modifies this a little bit. So instead of moving spider robot distance to rock, instead of it moving that distance, it's going to take that distance and it's going to subtract 1 from it. So once you start doing a little bit of math with this, and by the way, you can make this as crazy complicated as you want, right? Um, you're starting to create what in uh, programming vocabularies refer to as an expression. So an expression is when you create some sort of a, usually mathematical, it doesn't have to be about numbers, you're doing something to it, you're doing some sort of manipulating with it, and you're creating an expression. Okay, and this is an example of an expression, distance to rock minus one. Okay. I don't particularly like that minus one though, I picked that number arbitrarily, 
what would be nice is to actually measure how big that rock is and subtract that distance from it. So I'm going to go over to here and if I go to um, the rock now, because now I'm interested in finding out something about the rock, and take a look at functions associated with the rock, if I scroll down, down here there's all kinds of things associated with the size of the rock. Okay, I'll scroll over so you can see them. Okay, And so these are asking the question, hey rock, what's your width? What's your height? What's your depth? Right? Are you smaller than this? Are you larger than that? You can go to there and, and, and change it what you want. What I'm interested in is the rock's width. So instead of having a 1 there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag it over, and replace the 1 with this. Notice again how green goes around it once you've dragged it to a place where it's going to work. I'm going to let it go, and the 1's now replaced with rock's width. So I'm creating a little bit more of a complicated expression, but if we think about it, this should work now. So it's going to move the distance to the rock, which is the distance from the center of the spider robot to the center of the rock, but then it's going to subtract off the width of the rock from that distance, and we're going to end up with a distance now that shouldn't end up with the spider robot um, mushing into the rock. Okay, so I'm going to scroll out again a little bit. We're going to play that one out, and we'll see how satisfactory this looks now. And the spider robot turns, moves towards the rock, no more crashing into the rock. It's a little bit more satisfying that way. If you look at the bottom of your textbook on page 56, you will see uh, a technical note. That technical note is kind of more as a challenge to you, and if you want to take it on, you're by all means to, but, uh, or you, you can if you like, but it is completely optional on your part. But it's a good little thing for you to just sort of read and understand how um, what we're doing here is sort of a primitive version of collision detection, and there's a more sophisticated version there at the bottom of page 56. If you want to incorporate that into your program, knock yourselves out. It's a great little exercise in constructing expressions using Alice, uh, but if you prefer just to submit exactly what we see here, then that is an option too.